Hey, welcome back guys to part three of our Draconic Evolution tutorial. Today we're going to go over the two, probably the biggest things, biggest contributors to uh, why people are looking up this mod, and that is the power storage as well as the power generation. And uh, to do that, we're going to have to basically just get started because it's, it's pretty in-depth. It is pretty in-depth. The power storage is actually pretty simple and we can get into that one really quick. What you're going to need is a power or energy core, which is right here, as well as you're going to need four particle generators like so, and you're going to need two energy pylons and you're going to need two pieces of glass. And this is all you're going to need to basically start having a productive uh, system. And technically you only need one energy pylon, but two just makes sense because what the energy pylons do are your in and outs. They're your inputs and your outputs for uh, energy. And we're going to get this guy set up because eventually we are going to connect him to our power generation unit. And we'll get that guy set up. So, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to grab some draconium blocks because we're going to actually do a tier two uh, altar. Sorry, uh, not alter, energy core. So we're gonna grab six blocks here. Okay, so basically it's a pretty simple build. You don't really need a lot to build it. And we're gonna go ahead and pick up a little piece of dirt here because I just don't want it like, you know, right on the ground. Um, and it doesn't have to be any like specific height off the ground or anything like that. It just basically has to be clear enough for you to be able to build the structure. If you look at the tablet, there are seven tiers to the energy core. The first tier is just the block itself. And you can see, as I'm looking at it, energy core tier one, it holds 45 million RF, okay? But we're actually gonna bump it up to a tier two. And to do a tier two, basically you just surround it. Those are not the right blocks. Let me, let me get the right blocks. I grabbed the wrong ones. Draconium, these ones. Need six of these guys. Like so. Right? So we basically just fully wrap it in the draconium blocks, and this is gonna make it a tier two. Like so. And this is now a tier two. But you can't see because you don't have anything identifying with that block in the middle. Not a problem. That's what these particle generators are for. You can place these particle generators up to uh, I think it's nine blocks away, eight or nine blocks away. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure on the numbers uh, because, well, you know, a lot of people have different interpretations of the numbers and stuff like that. So I always do eight blocks just to play it safe. Um, and they don't all have to be the same exact distance. So if I put this one like five blocks away and I place it down, it will still work like that. If I put this one just a uh, block away like that, it'll still work. Basically, you just have to have enough room for the blocks, like so. And then if I do a little shift right click, you'll see that it turns on. So once again, I like to show this because everybody does everything so structured. And I know a lot of people, you know, try to make things work and then it's not completely like 100% structured. But this is, <clears throat> this is a great example. This is one block, that's two blocks, that was four blocks, and that was eight blocks. But as you look, as you can see, we're now a tier two energy core, and instead of 45 million, we now hold 273 million RF. It's a good amount of RF to get started. It's a pretty decent amount of RF to get started. That is the energy core. It's very, very simple. If you open up the Draconic tablet, it'll take you through how to build tier two, tier three, tier four, all the way up to tier seven. Tier seven is just a lot of redstone and a lot of draconium. Long story short, that's really what it comes down to. That is the energy core. But what I am going to do is I am going to hook up a creative, oh, nope, sorry, I need to do it here, a creative energy cell to this bad boy because I'm gonna wanna use this guy to do our, um, our energy providing for our generator because we're gonna need energy right off the bat. All right, so how do we get energy into it and how do we get energy out of it? Well, that's what these pylons I was telling you were for. Right here is the middle of the, the ball, obviously as you can see, if you place your pylon below the middle block, right, then what you need to do is place a piece of glass on top. And you'll see it turns into this pretty blue orb. And right now this is set to output. 
So basically it's outputting into whatever I connect to it. If I just give a right click on the orb, it's now set to input and you can see the arrows pointing in versus the arrows pointing out. It's a pretty simple GUI, no, or not a GUI, but a pretty simple uh, interaction there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a creative orb here. It's set to put in. And so as you can see, it's pulling energy from the creative cube and just pumping energy into the ball. And it's only limited by uh, whatever source of energy is being provided. This is an infinite, um, unlimited uh, uh, in and out system. So you can mass produce. So as you can see, I'm already over uh, 45, 46, 47 million. It's pretty fast. It's pretty quick. That is basically how you get energy in. And then also, like I said, if you wanted to, uh, if you happen to, let me do this, just shift click. If your pylon is above, all you got to do is put the glass block below it. And as you can see, the energy is, uh, or the orb is doing its thing, and it's doing energy output. So as you can see, the white particles are going from the ball to the pylon, telling you that, hey, I am taking energy from the ball. So that's that. But I'm going to put this one down right here because we are going to inevitably connect right over here. Oh, and these, these have a limit of 15 blocks from the core. So basically, I can go set this guy right over here and he will still get energy like so and you will see the particles slowly flow in well, actually am i still within 50 yep there he goes but if i get outside of range of that and i put it down you'll see that no particles are going to be coming in so that guy is receiving particles showing you it is connected whereas the other guy over here is not connected pretty simple little setup just remember if the block is under it needs the glass needs to go on top if the block is over the uh, midway point, the glass needs to go on the bottom. Pretty simple system. And as you can see, we're probably already getting pretty close to our 273 million. We are. All right now, the reason I put this guy over here is because this is the big kahuna. We're about to do the big kahuna of the mod. It can be very, very dangerous if not done correctly. And the way we're going to do it today, I'm going to demonstrate uh, self-contained mode where you do it basically by yourself without any additional mods like computer craft or anything like that and then I'm going to show you what happens when you make a mistake so I'm going to go ahead and clear out my inventory here and we are going to go ahead and grab the pieces we need for this so the first thing we are going to need is we're going to need a draconic reactor core along with the, uh, the core we are going to need I might as well just do this we are going to need one infuser, one reactor energy infuser, and we are going to need four reactor, there it is, reactor stabilizers. And this is all you need technically to uh, build your uh, reactor, right? Now, I made a mistake the first time I tried to film this a couple days ago, and I'm not going to make this mistake again because I was trying to hurry up the build. And so I did, like I said over there, where I kind of shorted things and I didn't give myself enough room. And as soon as I started the reactor, it took about 10 seconds and I blew the reactor up. Fortunately, it only blew up probably to like that tree line over there. And ah, no, no, I think I got all the way to that mountain over there. And uh, it was about 10 or 15 blocks deep. It was a pretty big explosion for a very small reactor. So understand these things are very, very dangerous. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy here and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. You have to be a minimum of four blocks away uh, for this if you are going to go. Okay, that thing is loud, but I love it. Rain started, rain stopped. If you're going to go for a maximum size reactor, uh, all your items have to be at least four blocks away from the core. All right. So basically, this is the energy infuser right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure we're four. I'm going to go a safe six is what I'm going to do. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to actually place this guy right here. Now, if you have any questions about this, this is the front of the reactor stabilizer. This is the back. The reason this is important is because the back is how you take energy out of the reactor core. And obviously the front has to face the reactor. That's just kind of common sense. So one, two, three, four, five, and the reactor goes here. Oh, so the stabilizer goes there. And then one, two, three, four, five, and stabilizer goes there. And while I'm setting this up, let me please let me explain. I am not giving an in-depth lesson on this uh, reactor 
because that could that would be an entire episode by itself and it would be a very long episode by itself because this reactor to get it running smoothly and to make it as productive as possible uh, takes a lot of time and energy and uh, basically I'm just showing you how to set it up long story short you'll know if you set it up correctly if you right click on this and nothing worked sometimes this will happen it is actually set up correctly but because there was blocks in between those and the the uh, orb itself or whatever it doesn't want to work so all you have to do it's a pretty simple fix basically just break your core put it back in place and you can just get rid of that block and then now if I right click on this guy you'll see that the the GUI comes up totally normal happens all the time uh, it's just a matter of when you're placing any of these blocks if there's a block in between it and the core it won't read it and so just break the core and put it down a new one so it's all set up and good to go and basically now we can start generating power now what we're going to do here it's going to be a very rough uh version of this okay this is very very rough i'm just giving you the general idea but Understand that uh, if you are not safe with this and you're doing it on a server, you can cause a lot of havoc and a lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage. So actually what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna put another one of you <coughs> right here and let me grab another piece of glass and put you right there because I want one in and one out over here. I need a place for energy to be stored basically. So, oh, and I didn't explain. Okay, so there is going to be something you need to get to get to this point. You are going to have to kill a Chaos Dragon because to make this Draconic Reactor Core here, the recipe for it calls for a Chaos Shard. As well as the Reactor Stabilizers, this, I think it's this guy? No, one of these guys. Uh, this guy? <laughs> oh, there's something else that's in. Um, oh yeah, the Chaos Core. The Chaos Core, which does go in the Reactor Stabilizer, uh, needs shards. Okay, The way you get that shard, I'm going to show you, and hopefully we don't die doing this. If I do die, so be it, life goes on. But we're going to go take a trip to the Chaos Dragon real quick, and I'm going to show you. I've actually set a point inside the island, so at least he can't shoot me right off the bat and do any damage. But this is the core of the island right here. This is the Chaos Island. As you can see, the Chaos Guardian already has taken some damage because I was trying to weaken him a little bit so he didn't bother me too much. But this is the Chaos Core where the Chaos Crystals are. Now, I'm going to go up and see if I can kill this Chaos Dragon. By the way, he is so OP, he can actually kill you in creative mode. So, um, I left one of you existing. And there you are. And there you go. I brought my OP bow with me, so. There he goes. So he's dead. Um, what's really funny is uh, if I was in, you know, uh, single player, or I mean, if I was in creative or not, it, that battle would have gone the same way. I have uh, kind of mastered my technique for beating him. Uh, basically, take this freaking awesome bow with you. That That's my technique. No, no special. Where's it at? I lost the core. Well, I can always find it this way. Okay, cool. So, Chaos Core, go. So, as you can see, the shield's no longer over it. And then, basically, all I got to do is take my pick and pick it out. Now, the very first time I did this, I was very confused. And I am going to show you why. So, I pulled out my pick and I tried to mine up these crystals. And you're going to see... Oh, it worked right off the bat that time. The Chaos Crystal's been broken. And this is going to kill me. This is basically going to be like a nuclear explosion, and even in creative, it has the ability to kill me. So I'm going to try to get out of here as fast as possible. And you can see the energy is building up over there, and this island is going to evaporate. So do make sure that you get that guy before the island evaporates and the whole thing explodes. And you can see my screen's kind of freaking out because it's going to blow. So anyways, that's how you get the chaos shards. We're going to go home before this blows and crashes my computer because sometimes big explosions like to crash my game. I don't know why. So anyways, <laughs> we're back here. We've got the chaos shards. We're able to build the um, the reactor and let's get that reactor built. I'm gonna show you the simplest possible way to build this guy. This is 100% man controlled and this is an item I didn't actually show you before. It's a fluix duct, uh, that, or sorry, I don't, uh, flux duct. 
there's also a fluid duct that comes with the mod. Um, I didn't show it to you in the fun mod uh, block episode because I knew I was going to come back here. And uh, also, the fluid is very, it's exactly like the flux. So I'll explain that in just a second. Um, I need some cryo uh, infused, or sorry, stabilized. There we go. And we're just going to basically run some power here that's going to be coming from this bad boy, right? Like so. And we're just going to run power right down to this uh, infuser because this is actually how you create the shield or the containment unit that keeps this thing from getting out of hand and blowing up. This guy right here takes a whole bunch of energy in and prevents anything from happening to that thing. Okay. But there's going to be two guys that are going to be set up to this as well because this is eventually going to be um, a cyclical uh, build, which basically means it's going to be uh, powering itself. So we're going to go ahead and run some pipes down here to the in. I'm going to go ahead and do it over here to keep those pipes completely separate. And there we go. Those are connected. Now, generally speaking, this could start right now. If I threw some fuel in there, it could start. But we're going to add these flux ducts, flux gates in. And the reason for these flux gates is very, very important. Okay. This is how we're going to regulate how much power uh, the system is getting, you know, put into it as well as how much it's going to get put out because like I said the system is very dangerous all right now let me put one of these blocks on the ground real quick just to explain it real quick okay so purple is in where more most of the time you have blue and orange blue for in orange for out this one's purple and orange so purple is the inlet orange is the outlet so what I've got going on here is I've got the purple side over here energy is going into the block we're going to regulate it and I'll show you how in a second it's going to be going out to there here energy is going to be pumped out of the reactor into this block right here and we're going to regulate it as it goes back into the orb over here which should be maxed out now which it is so we're actually going to go ahead and remove that creative energy cell so that is not adding any additional power to the system and now i will show you how these uh flux ducts work so basically we're going to start this off really low so it's nice and safe uh, what this does is it allows you to control it with a redstone signal uh, on or off, right? So I go ahead and just zero it out. Mine, because I just run it completely manually in the very beginning, I'm just going to set this guy up to 100,000 RF per tick. So basically saying that the energy being donated is going to be 100,000 RF per tick that's going to be going into this infuser, okay? Now, at the same time, I'm going to remove 100,000 RF per tick over here that's going to go back into our storage unit. So basically, it'll, it's a, like I said, it's a cyclical thing. It's just going to put energy back in here, all right? Now, all we got to do is, oh, I need to grab one more thing. I need some awakened draconium. That is the fuel for this bad boy. And it takes up to eight. So you can see it's a little tiny ball right now. As I click and throw these, put the fuel insert in, now it's a big ball. Pretty freaking sweet. Pretty, pretty sweet. I just, I'm kind of nervous about this grass right here. This grass is close. Um, like I said, little things, it's kind of temperamental, but once you get a hang of it, it's actually pretty easy to control and run. All right, so this guy is good to go. This guy is totally set up. We've got it regulated. We've got it set up so, you know, it's not going to let too much energy into the containment field and it's not going to let too much energy out. So we're going to right click on it. We're going to go to our stats and we're going to see nothing's happening. There's no temperature load factor, no generation, nothing going on, right? But I'm going to go ahead and charge the reactor. And basically what it's saying is take energy. And you can see it's all spilling out over here. Take energy. Oh, you know what? I can't have these guys touching each other. Let me let me adjust that real quick. Um, let me go ahead and stop this. Yeah, you go ahead and take the containment field down. <laughs> I'm going to move you over to this side. And I'm going to move you right there. And we're going to go and break you and set you to the input. Okay, cool. Because it shouldn't have been getting power going in yet because it wasn't producing power. And that's how I noticed that. All right, so anyways, we are going to go ahead and start this back up, start to charge. So it's taking its 1,000 RF per tick, and it's putting it into this guy right here, which will always show zero, by the way, because the energy is just pumping straight into the containment field. And as you can see, it's no longer an orange ball. It's turned red, and it's got this blue glow around it, which is the containment field. Pretty freaking cool and awesome to watch. Now, if we click on this guy, we'll see the containment field is up at 50% which now means it's ready to start generating energy. So over here, we've got the energy saturation. 
But the, the problem is, <clears throat> if you don't watch these numbers, that's the best, best way I can explain it. Um, if your energy saturation gets too low, your heat's going to get too high. If it gets too high, you're fine. That just means that you're not outputting a lot of energy, but then you're going to also have run into problems too. So long story short, um, this is something that takes some time to get to know or download a program like for computer craft or any of those programs that help regulate it. Uh, you know, uh, Pacebin has a couple on it and uh, you can basically learn it that way. And see the saturation is going up and we've already drained, watch this, a ton of energy from here. Look at this, we're already drained 270 million. It's pretty crazy. We're gonna go ahead and up this because I wanna put more energy into the system real quick. So we're gonna bump that up to like 200 for the containment field, just doubling it because I wanna get as much energy saturated as possible because I wanna get this to 50%. Once this gets to 50% and actually I need to go put you down right here because I'm gonna need more energy in there. So we'll do that. There you go, so you're pumping some more energy in, cool. And as the energy saturation goes up, it's gonna to get to 50% as well, then the core temperature is gonna to start to rise and it's gonna start getting ready to work. I know this sounds kind of convoluted and um, if you guys do want a very in-depth um, process for how the reactor works let me know in the comments and I will definitely make a thorough one this is more of just kind of explaining all the things that the mod has to offer and showing you that they do work um, and uh, so I'm not gonna get too in-depth but I can explain the ins and outs in a very layman's terms kind of way um, using the term layman's terms a very simple way for you guys to understand what you need to regulate on this and how you can actually do it manually that you don't need a crazy computer prop program to run this thing you can do it manually which is what I'm going to demonstrate today uh, it is possible so uh, as the saturation gets close it's almost 50 percent as soon as that hits 50 percent we'll watch the core temperature start going up and then we will be very close to starting generating energy and things will be awesome okay so creeping up, creeping up, creeping up, and there we go. So we've hit 50%. As soon as we hit 50%, you'll see the core temperature starts going up. Once we get to 2000, uh, a temperature of 2000, we'll be able to start generating energy. The one thing I will tell you is 8000, right up here where these red lines start developing, this is your no-go line. This is the one you don't, never want to hit. Once you get over 8000, you're going to lose containment, no matter how high your containment is over here, and uh, you're going to have bad things happen long story short very bad things happen so we are putting out 200 there we are currently not taking energy and oh sorry we're taking 100 out of the system once we start it uh, let me make sure this has enough power that I can disconnect yeah it's it's basically running at 100% right now so let's go ahead and kill that guy because it's gonna start generating RF on its own in just a second and we're coming up on 2000 Do I need to let more energy through? Jump you up to about 250. And you're stopped right there. Why are you stopped right there? You shouldn't be stopped. You should be still be going. Do I need... Oh, huh. I don't have anything input in. I have drained that, so there. Let's put you back there. Now the temperature's going to go up. Why... Did I, that's outputting. Oh, you were drained, it was already to zero. So yeah, so we went through 270 really, really fast, as you can see, didn't realize that. All right, so now that this is a 2000, basically you just click here to activate and you'll see that we are now generating RF. So this is the point where I no longer need this because this is gonna be putting out through this block 100,000 RF per tick because we are generating 256,000 RF per tick. And so we're gonna to wanna to lower this guy down just a little bit because it doesn't have 250,000. And this is where player management comes into play. The temperature's not going astronomically high, so we're okay. The input field is uh, dropping really, really low. Um, so we're gonna to wanna to increase that. Back up to 250, but we're going to drop you down to about 50,000 for right now, just to make sure that we are putting enough into our uh, input or our containment field. Containment's dropping off the chart, 
and this is what happens when you're not careful it's about to exceed it and I'm gonna back up because like I said this was an example of how to set it up but not what to do and this thing is gonna blow and it's gonna blow big once that containment field drops down to you know an unreachable level which it might hang on I don't know I think I left it where it's gonna be really really close uh, basically you get a huge kaboom like explosion and no, it looks like the containment field is actually going to hold. Okay. Oh, nope, there it goes. And that's what happens when you mess up. So, like I said, if you want an in-depth way of how to set that up properly, by all means, just ask, and I can definitely uh, hook you up with that, in, or uh, uh, create a tutorial specifically for that. But that is how you set it up and get it going, and that's how you can integrate your power station into it. And I just, I want to show you sometimes, actually a lot of times this will actually crash my game, but I want to show you the damage that this thing can cause. You can see on my map how uh, damaging it really is. And once you start getting lava on the edge, you'll know that, yeah, there we go. This is like the edge right here. Um, that's how you know you're kind of at the edge of the explosion. So if I hit J real quick, you can see that it had a big kaboomy. This is your epicenter here. I'm way out here. A lot of chunks were destroyed in the making of this. But anyways, guys, that is Draconic Evolution, basically from top to bottom. Any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw them in the comment section. As well, if you do want a tutorial on the, um, the reactor itself, where I can teach you how to self-manage it without a program, or <clears throat> even show you some of the programs out there to set them up so it runs very, very smoothly, just let me know, and I will definitely uh, put something together for you guys. But until next time, guys, or until the next mod next to be or needs to be uh, have a tutorial created, I am Slider Havoc, and I am out of here. I really want to see the destruction here. But this is the end. I'm just going to float around. So if you guys are done watching, you can just stop watching now because, yeah, I am literally just checking out the destruction. It's, it's massive. And I think this is my crash point right here.